Hello, hello, and welcome back to the tutorials. Um, in this tutorial, we're gonna be um reading and deleting from our context database. Um, first we have our imports. You can pass it and type them out, or you could just add them in as you go along. And Eclipse will request that you add an import. Okay, so uh, our context activity has to extend, extend, extend list activity. Um, make sure you add that part. Okay, and then here are our variables that we will be using. This will be our progress dialog, which will be like a little text box that pops up and shows a little spinning circle and tells us that an action is taking place right now, and it'll pretty much just tell you why you can't do anything, since there'll be stuff running on different threads doing all the actions required. We have our JSON parser, which will be the object um, from the class we made in the previous tutorial. We have an array list, which of co uh, named context list. This will hold all our context. Um, we have our read context and our delete context. Um, this will be the URLs used and passed in through our JSON parser. Um, make sure you replace this part, the your hosting service, with your actual hosting service. So, for instance, mine would be like 000webhost.com slash contact slash get context at PHP or something like that. Um, but yeah, make sure you do it for both of them. Here we just have a uh, constants, so like our button click will just be button, tag update will be update, etc. Um, yeah, there will be a tag for you know for each of the values that we will be retrieving from our JSON array. We have our actual JSON array of context, and right now we set it to null because we're gonna actually set the values to it once we get our JSON object. And we're just gonna have a string that's private, and it's gonna represent the private uh, ID of each contact that we received from the database. Okay, so on create, we are going to create our contact list. We're just gonna instantiate it. We're not actually gonna add anything yet to it. Um, and then we're gonna call load all contacts. This is gonna be run on a separate separate thread, and it'll be what um as I was saying um sorry I was interrupted um load all context is running a separate uh thread and what it's doing is creating the the JSON object and in this case it's actually going to be loading it into our list um list view so let's look at that right now and then we'll come back here. Um, okay, this is our load all context um, class. That's obviously extending an async tag because it's an asynchronous or class, or it's run on a separate thread. So on our pre on our on pre execute, what we want to do is actually start up the dialog, and this will show loading context. Please wait. And yeah, see, we're going to be showing it. Okay. So then in the doing background, what we're going to do is we're going to um, initialize our params, which is going to be a list of value pairs. This will not be used for to load all the context, but it will be used for deleting, updating, and creating. So at this moment, we're just going to create it, but we're not actually going to put anything in it. So now we're going to get our JSON object, and we're going to do so by getting our JSON parser class and then calling the method make HTTP request. We're going to send in read context, get, and params as the parameters. Params would be this value pair right here, which we're not going to be using, the list. And get is the type of um, HTTP request that we're going to be doing. Okay. So now we're going to try this and we're going to say if our success equals, you know, we're going to set it to um, the tag, whatever the value of the tag success contains in our JSON object, and it'll either return a one or a zero. One would be for yes, you did get the data you wanted, and it would be like no, uh, there was an error or something like that. So if it does equal one, um, we're gonna set our context to the JSON array, 
and then we're going to loop through each of the contacts in the JSON array. Okay, we're going to make a JSON object for each contact, and we're also going to retrieve each of the value pairs from the contact. So, like, we're going to get from the tag PID, we're going to be getting an ID from tag first name, we're going to be getting the first name of the contact, etc. Okay, now we're going to create a, map, a hash map, and in the hash map, we're going to put in the value, the key, tag PID, and the actual ID. And then each of, um, okay, once we add the map, which will be representative of one contact, we're going to add it to our contact list. And then on post execute, what we're going to do is on a separate thread, so yeah, on the separate thread, we're going to have our list adapter, and what the adapter is going to do is we're going to actually instantiate or fill in each of the items into the list view. So uh, for the simple adapter, context activity that this it's this activity. Context list is just going to be our list of uh, individual contacts. Our dot layout dot contact is the contact uh, layout that we made, the one that actually had um, the first name, last name, etc. In the previous tutorial, where we had the PID be invisible or not visible, uh, set to gone. And then we're going to also send in a new string with each of the tags um, or this would be the key the keys for the contact list from the contact list and we're also going to send in the PID of each of the um, labels that we use that way we can actually fill it in you know it'll know where what goes with what okay and so then this will actually load up our list view and we'll actually be able to have a whole list of all of our contacts and since we want this contact list to be clickable uh, this is where we were before this is where we had left off in load all contacts okay so now we're going to do the part where we actually make it be the list view clickable so we have list view whatever we get the list view we uh, and then we actually have this method that set on click listener so this will be checking if we clicked an item on the list view Okay, this is just like the standard uh, calls that you need to handle um, item clicking. So we're just going to make a new intent, and then in this new intent, we're going to get the content. Um, and we're going to um, set the PID, private ID value, to whatever it is from the item that we clicked. And then here we're going to check that if the button clicked from the intent that we got here when we get this intent it's, we're getting the data from the main activity that was sent over remember where it had read delete or whatever as a string so we're going to see if that is equal to update and if it is that would mean that they press the update button and uh, we're going to start a new ID uh, a new intent I mean and we're going to send in all the data including the PID, first name, last name, area code, phone number, etc. And we're going to put that all into an extra and then we're going to start a new activity. Otherwise, if it was a, if the delete button was clicked, all we're going to do is we're going to call this delete method or this delete class, we're going to execute it, which is another thread, which is basically the same as the load all contact. And that one is located all the way at the bottom of, our, of the class. Um, and so here's this other class. It's a nested class, a class inside of another class. Okay, so it's the delete contact class, and it extends the async task. And on our pre on pre execute, once again, we have the dialog box that shows up, and it says deleting contacts. Please wait. Um, and then in the background, it does the exact same thing as our load all contacts did, except that this time we're actually sending in a parameter. And the parameter will only be the private ID value. Um, so yeah, when we make a JSON object, we're gonna send delete contact, which is our URL that was all the way at the top of the class. We're gonna say that we want to use the post method, and we're sending in parameters, and the parameters actually contain something to send, which will be the PID. Okay, and then we're just gonna add this section of code, which this what this does is if the success was equal to one. And we just close the dialog box and we refresh this activity 
Otherwise, we don't want to refresh it because obviously it wasn't deleted or anything. There might have been an error. We just dismissed the box. Okay, that concludes this tutorial. And uh, in the next tutorial, actually, there's one more thing. Since um, the update class allows you to come back to this screen, what we're going to do is we're going to actually wait for or we're going to check that we got a result code of 100 and if it is we actually started. Otherwise something else happened or an error happened or whatever and we want to actually refresh this screen. Okay, so that concludes this tutorial and next time we will learn how to update, I mean, yeah, how to update and create a new entry into our database. And the key things you should note for actually doing the connections is do it on a separate thread, uh, create your JSON object by parsing, which was from the previous tutorial, this class, remember this is a very important class, and also, um, yeah, know how to handle your JSON object. To handle JSON objects, you'll you don't really there isn't really a way that you always do it it's actually based on how the response from the http server or the, from the server is set up so you would actually have to look at the server stuff so actually i could show an example of mine right so this would be how an example would look like for a json object you would have your bracket uh opening brackets you know or squarely break uh curly braces. Um, you would have your context array. This would be an array because its value starts with a open bracket and ends to a ending bracket. So all of this would be your array. And then this would be another um, object with a value of one. And that would be your success. So if we did, if they didn't get the success, or if your success code equals zero, then that would mean that there was an error there. So yeah, that concludes this tutorial.